Welcome to another edition of the MMA Complex. My name is Josh. My name is James. And we are here finally for those listening on YouTube. And those of you watching, please subscribe to the channel. We are finally on YouTube. How do you feel about that, James? Oh man, I'm I'm I was shaking my boots gonna do you know doing this for the first time just because yeah. I hate seeing myself on video, but you know, it's something that Josh and I have been uh, talking about for a very long time. It's coming yeah. to fruition, and I'm excited to get things, this thing going because whatever is going to help, you know, the show you know, get more exposed, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, yeah. even though I hate seeing myself on video. But, you know, and, and also, it gives you guys an option to either hear us on, on audio or video format, so it's up to you guys. So, yeah, yeah I'm excited. What about you, man? Yeah, no, I, I love it. Um, we're happy to bring this to you. Uh, we've been meaning to do this for quite some time now. And hopefully from here on out, you're going to get the best of the MMA Complex on uh, audio version on iTunes and wherever podcasts can be found. And now on YouTube so you can watch it, listen to it on the go. Whatever you want, you have that choice. So uh, today we have a great show for you today. Uh, we have Raymond Elizalde who is fighting this weekend on RFA 38. He's a friend of the show. He's been on the show previously. Uh, we'll get, give you that interview shortly and uh, have you watch that or listen to that. And... Uh, this weekend, we're going to actually uh, recap UFC Fight Night 88, which took place this past Sunday, and uh, cover all the news and hot topics and MMA stuff that's been going on in the fight world, um, and also look ahead to any uh, events that we have to cover. Um, but first, we have a, a, we got to give a, a shout out to our sponsor, HollerRockGear.com. Go to HollerRockGear uh, and use the promo code COMPLEX15, HollerRock.com. Um, and make sure you register at the site. Use the promo code Complex15. James is actually wearing a shirt of theirs right now. And yeah. You know, oh. Don't you have a bag? We have a bag here. Yeah, I wear a bag. Here you go, guys. There you go. Take a look at this. So a lot of this stuff you can still find on the site. Um, I know the the Hollow Rock has gone through a new rebranding, a new look, a new sleeker look, and the, the gear looks amazing. But some of the stuff you're still going to be able to find on on the on the site. And make sure you go there. And uh, take a look and use the promo code to get 15% off. Yep. So uh, this weekend was Memorial Day weekend. It was a long weekend. We had uh, I had a lot of fun. I had spent some time with family. Went to San Diego. Got to see X Men, which was great. How was your weekend? It was quiet, but it was good, man. Uh, I just spent I just, you know sat at home pretty much ate like a pig for the past three days. Uh, yes. And. Yeah. Uh, and slept a lot, and then you know Sunday was was nice because we had you know fights, fights that that were pretty long, but I mean they were yeah. some of them were pretty entertaining. But yeah, it was it was good, man. What about, yeah. How was San Diego? Um, San Diego was great. Had fun as always. Um, yes, yeah, so about the fights at UFC Fight Night '88. That was on Sunday. Um, that was. It was nice to have fights on Sunday. Um, I kind of enjoyed it on Sunday just because I could just. Sunday's a time to relax and to, to just kick back and uh, wind know, down. Yeah, wind down. And it's nice to just have fun and watch some, some fights, you know what I mean? Usually stuff is going on on Friday, Saturday, so you don't really have time to just sit back and watch some fights. Sunday's perfect day for that, so I think they should maybe do some more often in the evening, which would be great, or in the morning, which I always love those cards. Um, but it was a good week overall. Um, you know, I'm glad that we finally got to do this and hope you guys enjoy this show from here on out. We even got these nice little mugs here. I hope you guys check these out. James has his Robin. I love Robin. I hate Batman. I love Robin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got Robin joining us here. So, I mean, um, you want to get right to it? You want to get yeah. cover use Fight Night 88? Yeah, I mean, it was a long card as to watch, so hopefully it doesn't take that long to cover, so... <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a very, very long yeah. card. I mean, yeah. I mean I'm mean, i sure there's probably people that really enjoyed it, but for us, just like... I mean, I was just watching it just casually, having fun at home. Um, it was tough to get through. Yeah. Um, there were majority decisions. Um, there was a couple of nice finishes here and there. The main event, obviously, was a finish, but... Overall, I thought the the card really dragged. I mean, from like three in the afternoon to from nine o'clock at, at night, night yeah. like full on fights. I watched it on uh, uh, Fox Sports Go, which I think that the commercials are, are a little. They I don't know if they're the same amount of time in between on regular Fox Sports One because I haven't really seen it on Fox Sports One in quite some time. I watched most of my fights on Fox Sports on Fox Sports Go because I'm usually on the go, I guess. But um, 
you know, how did the, the night feel for you, man? Did it drag? <laughs> did you enjoy it? Um, it? It was long, man. I mean, this is a car that Josh and I were really excited to see and yeah. come to watch on, on, on television. So I was super pumped, man. I was really pumped for Sarah McMahon and yeah. Jessica I. I was really excited for the main event and the co-main event with uh, Hannah Brown making his featherweight debut. Yeah. Um, so I was really pumped. And then seeing the, those fights drag, I mean, some of those fights were really, I mean, I think the the Vitor Miranda fight was hard to watch. And then um, some, yeah, some of those some cards on the, on the, fights on the main card were really hard to watch. But um, I mean, overall, it was, I mean, it was okay. I wouldn't give, I wouldn't say it's great, but it was okay. I, I, felt, I, I felt bad for people on the East Coast. You know, because I, I think it ended at 9 o'clock for us. It probably ended at midnight for them. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm glad I live in, on the West Coast. <laughs> well, to kick off the night, if you guys saw on UFC Fight Pass, there were two fights on UFC Fight Pass. You had uh, Adam Milstead versus Chris De La Rocha. Um, that was a finish. That was a TKO uh, by stoppage. That was a good fight overall to kick off the night. I thought the night was going to go pretty good from here on in. But it, you know, it kind of started to slow down. But the main event for Fight Pass was Brian Caraway and Aljamain Sterling, which was a fight that we were looking forward to because the rivalry between those guys was was fun to watch and you know I think really exciting and to see guys who are an up and coming to have this rivalry that only you know maybe main carters usually have. Um, I thought it was pretty nice, but the fight overall was, you know, it was it went Brian Caraway's way by uh, by split decision. Um, what did you think of the fight? Yeah, I mean, to echo what you just said about the the rivalry, uh, you know, uh, Aljamain Sterling was calling out Brian Caraway for a very long time, and he he recently just uh, signed a new deal with with the UFC, yeah. and so this is a really um, highlighted fight for both guys. You know, uh, Aljamain Sterling was a higher ranked bantamweight. So fighting someone uh, lower than him was a uh, was pretty precarious on on, on his part, but I, didn't, I thought the fight was was really close. I thought Caraway did enough to win the fight. Um, I think his grappling, um, Brian Caraway's grappling was was the story of the fight, and yeah. and I mean kudos to Brian, you know, for winning that fight and not letting uh, emotion play a, a part in this fight. Um, I feel bad for Al Jermaine, man, because I think he loses more than, 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 than Brian Caraway. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Al Jermaine was, uh, ranked number four on the, on the ranking, the rankings for the, for the division. And, uh, Caraway just pretty much knocked him off. I mean, Caraway was in what, maybe seven or eight. I'm not sure what his number was. Uh, but now I'm sure he takes that number four spot over Al Jermaine. And it, it was a, it was, and, it, and it was Al Jermaine's uh, call to like really he was pushing for this fight yeah and it just ended up backfiring uh, backfiring for him and kudos to, to Brian Caraway because I know he's known for his game plans and I guess he was you know just pretty much able to execute what he was able to get away with in the fight and got the win so that's really all that matters in the fight game was that win but the, the that was the fight pass prelim card it was a g good fights to kick off the night you know it looked like it was gonna be a good night um next up you had uh, eric coke versus shane campbell which was a uh, rear naked choke second round a uh, good coming back uh party you know showcase for uh eric coke who comes from rufus sport um what you think about that finish and i really liked his post fight i thought it was pretty good you know it was realistic and um you know, he was really uh, matured. It seemed like he really matured, and I think he even, even talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I was impressed with with uh, with Coke because you know he, he was off the game for two years, and he didn't show any ring rust, man. Usually, guys who have yeah. more than a year of, uh, of a layoff, it shows in their fight. It takes a little, you know a little time to 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 um, to get in there and feel comfortable and 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 have the timing right, but. You know, like he looked great in this fight, and uh, he had a super impressive submission. Yeah. And hopefully, he fights uh, more often than, than than not. Yeah. I mean, I I like to see him come back soon. I know he had uh, some time off, and you know, it's been a while since I've seen him in the cage. And, right. You know, it was a good shine for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you had uh, Jay Collier versus uh, Alberto Uda, which was a decent fight. I mean, the there wasn't. There's more output from Jake Collier, who ended yeah. up getting the win by TKO. Yeah. Um, nice spinning back kick from him. Uh, Uda kind of confused me a bit because I didn't see anywhere where he was dominant. I know he had some Muay Thai background there. Um, Jake Collier is known for uh, 
for traveling around. He traveled around to uh, Korea and all that, got some training there. And it, it, his improved striking really showed. Uh, but with Uda, there, I didn't see anything that showed to me that he had any advantage in the fight. And, and it ended up Jay, being Jake Collier's night. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, I was happy when this fight ended, man. Cause <laughs> I was, you know, I was excited that I said, "Man, two finishes in a row is gonna be a good night." Yeah, um, but that didn't happen. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Jake, yeah, Jake looked great, man. He 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 uh, he showed great striking, and he showed um, how how much of a better fighter. I, mean, I, I think, I, I think uh, it was more of a showcase fight for Jake than anything else, and yeah. Uh, yeah, he looked great. Yeah. Um, and the next up, you had Abel, uh, Abel Trujillo versus uh, Jordan Rinaldi, which I think, in a way, has started the decisions of the night. In a way, it was the first decision of the night, and pretty much uh, up until the up until the main event was the case for pretty much every fight. And every fight kind of had this pace of uh, of kind of a little bit of back and forth, but mostly just just. Even matchups, in a way, there's a lot of even matchups. I didn't think there was going to be that that much of a, a, a stalemate in some of these fights, but the Abel Trujillo and Jordan Rinaldi fight was good. Um, you know, Abel got the win by unanimous decision. Uh, Jordan looked good. Um, I know it was a, like a short notice fighter, or at least it was his UFC debut. What, which one was it? It was. I, I believe it was his debut. His debut, right? He looked big for the division. He looked good. Um, Abel Trujillo is now a vegan. He looked a little bit slimmer. Um, his performance kind of didn't really change too much. He kind of still looked like the same Abel, um, maybe a little less aggressive, but that might be him uh, adapting to this new diet and this new uh, change in how he his physique and maybe he doesn't feel like he needs to power through his punches anymore and try to finish the fight. He can just go the whole distance. I don't really know what what's to make what to make of it, but he looked good. Um, he got the win, and that's really all that matters, really. Yeah, I mean, I was super impressed with the fact that the you know Abel Trujillo was a way smaller guy in the cage, yeah. um, and the fact that he um, closed the distance and he he beat up, he, he you know beat him up pretty bad, and yeah. uh, it was it was pretty uh, a pretty dominant win by Abel. Uh, Abel was really um, he was pro vegan uh, for his uh, I think his post fight interview. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I like like Josh said. I, I I don't think that changed the way he fights. He looked the same, but he looked, he yeah. looked dominant. Yeah, I'm not sure how it changes really. Most guys, I mean, when they when they change their their diet so extreme, it's I'm not sure how much of a, a factor that plays in their overall training and their the way they fight. Um, I've seen some changes like Mac Danzing uh, was a pro vegan, a big vegan guy. Um, He's the only other fighter that I could think of. Maybe Nate Diaz has been rumored to be a vegan, but Abel Trujillo, I know, is for sure now a vegan. So, I don't know. Do you think it really plays a factor in terms of how I, these guys perform? I think um, intake, this intake of like as, as far as protein and, and other things that yeah. that we get from meat that our body needs. I think it's all to his own. I think I think the you know the beauty of individuality is not everyone's the same and and i think i think um one's diet works on one person more than it does another person so it all yeah. depends on on who's doing it cuz our bodies work differently so yeah uh, but 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 i do believe that that uh, we get the, the like the nutrients that we need in 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 meat and and dairy products i think i think so i don't know uh, we'll see uh but he looked good um, and then you get to our, our previous guest uh, on the show from last episode was Sarah McMahon, who competed against Sarah, uh, I mean Jessica I, uh, this past Sunday. Uh, it was it was a it was a decent fight. There wasn't a whole lot of action going on. Um, I was happy to see Sarah get the win. It was a much needed win for both of these girls. Um, they, I know they're both like three or zero and three in their last a uh, few fights and. I don't know. It, it was a good showcase by Sarah. I wish she would have, you know, been a little bit more aggressive and gone for that finish because I saw there was a lot of positions to where she was so dominant she probably could have unloaded on Jessica. Uh, but what did you think about that fight overall? I mean, I, I think uh, the night before I was really excited. Yeah. Um, I almost couldn't sleep because I was that excited. <laughs> uh, Josh and I interviewed her, and she seemed really, um, really confident and really passionate, passionate in, in her interview. Yeah. So. I, I was excited to see her perform, um, but I think I think now looking back on the fight, I think that 
that both girls n knew that they needed a, a win in, in the division. And, yeah. and when two girls are fighting for a win, you know, two girls, I mean, both Jessica and Sarah McMahon um, were off, coming off of losing streaks and, and they both were um, pretty urgent to get that win. So I think, I think um, playing it safe for Sarah was, was, was her game plan is, you know, no matter what happens, or, or, or no matter what I do, I need that win. So I think at all costs, I mean, it being a boring fight, she didn't care. She wanted that win, and and it it it, sh it showed in the fight of her being like um, you know, passive, um, and and I and I I, I like Josh said, I was hoping that she'd be more aggressive because she you know she's a the stronger opponent in the cage, and she took her down a few times, and she was obviously the stronger opponent, but she didn't um she didn't do much in that fight. No, she didn't. Um, yeah. I agree with you too. I mean, I felt like there were moments there she could have done a little bit more, but you know, whatever the case is, she got the win. Um, she broke that losing streak, and she had one of the nicest uh, callouts for a, a for a title shot I think ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of her her, her title shot? Um, she, seemed, she seemed uh, a bit awkward, right? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, she's, she's super she, nice. Yeah, she's super nice, and, like, and it really her, showed. Yeah. yeah. And she's not a person to call anybody out. She never has. She's she's really quiet into herself, and she's I mean, I, props to her. Man, she's she's sipping out of her her comfort zone to do this, but it just came out in in a very nice way. But yeah, you can't help but smile when when you hear Sarah McMahon. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, next, you had uh, Paul Felder, Josh Berkman. I thought that fight was really good. It was a back and forth battle. Uh, Paul Felder ended up getting the decision. Um, I thought it was a even matchup, in my opinion, and a, a much needed win for Paul Felder. Yeah, Josh Bergman is a is a veteran in the sport. He's crafty. He has some 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 power in his punches, and it was a back and forth brawl. You know, Felder had did enough to to get the victory, and yeah. uh, it was a good good good, oh, good showing for for Paul Felder. Yeah, and then you had Chris Camozzi against uh, Vitor Miranda, uh, former guest. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, Lorenz Larkin against Jorge Masvidal, which was I was really excited for that fight. Um, I'm a big fan of like uh, both of these guys, and it was a it was a good showcase. Almost the exact same thing. Uh, it was just an even matchup. Uh, just Lorenz got the split decision and just seemed to, in my opinion, put out had a, a little bit more output than Jorge, especially towards the later rounds. And maybe could, some could attribute that eye poke to something um, in effect to how uh, uh, with Jorge's performance. But you know, overall, I thought Lorenz got the decision. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't do or deduct a point for for from Larkin because that was a nasty eye poke, man. It was yeah. deep and hurt his eye. I think mean, I think his eyes were even bleeding. It was yeah. uh, it was pretty scary, but. Um, props to uh, Jorge had to continue to fight, and uh, it was a it was a really exciting fight. Probably the one of the most exciting fights on this card. Um, Larkin was he's so fast and strong. Yeah. Um, it was really exciting back and forth. Um, I agree with the decision. I thought Larkin did enough to uh, to get the victory. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I think the judges got it right in there, and we we've seen uh, how judges score th these fights. And to me, I took the night off. I didn't really pay attention too much, and I think. Um, sitting on the couch and be a, cou a couch judge, um, it's it's a lot different. You don't see as much. It's a big difference. So yeah. I, I was like, I, I can't I can't put that much effort into really judging these fights. So in my opinion, just from what I saw, Lorenz Larkin did get yeah. the win. So, so yeah, Chris Camozzi uh, defeating uh, Vito Miranda. Uh, that was a decent fight. Uh, not a whole lot there. Not a whole lot output for either one. Um, it was a decent match overall. Um, then you had uh, Rick Story versus uh, Tarek Zafedina, a return for Rick Story. Uh, looked good in his uh, uh, return, about uh, over a year off. Um, what do you think about his performance? Do you think it was a little safe in his opinion? Because there was a lot of grappling, almost a grappler striker type of thing. Yeah, I mean, I was super impressed with, with Rick Story. You know, he, he came out, I, I mean, I thought he looked strong. Yeah. I thought his grappling looked really good. You know, uh, Tarek Zafedina, he, he, um, he, he almost didn't fight this fight. He had a... He cut his knee, I believe, and he he got cleared. I think the day yeah. before, and you can see the cut on his knee uh, during the fight. Uh, I feel bad for 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 uh, for Stephanie, man. He he did well, but but yeah, I mean, Rick Story was was a was a better fighter that night. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and then you had uh, uh, Jeremy Stevens versus Henan Burrell in the co-main event. This was Henan Burrell's uh, debut at uh, featherweight, I believe, right? Or what's featherweight? It? Yeah, featherweight, featherweight. right? Um, and it wasn't really a good night for him. He did good in the first round, 
But in the latter rounds, you saw where the size difference, I think he kind of guessed. He took some big shots from a bigger guy. And Jeremy Stevens, in my opinion, looked the bigger guy. His body, height-wise, they were around the same, but just physique and their bodies, um, Jeremy looked like the much bigger fighter, and I think it really showed in this fight um, with the power and the fact that Henry was looking for that takedown just to avoid those that stand-up exchange with a much bigger man. What did you think? Yeah, he hit him probably good in the first round, man. He looked light on his feet. Uh, he was he was landing some good shots. Yeah. But it just seems that whenever Henning gets gets um, gets hit, man, he becomes a different fighter. And here's a guy that was that was you know Dana White and a lot of people was considering this guy to be the best or one of the best pound pound fighters yeah. in the world. And he was a champion at 135. And uh, you know, I think I think those fights with TJ really um, did a lot on on Henning Brow. He hasn't looked the same since. Um, as far as um, Jeremy Stevens, that kid has power. He has size, and um, I don't know. I was thinking about this uh, actually today before I came to the studio. Um, a fight between him and Conor would be really interesting, man. Just because of size and and, and both possess uh, um, good power. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Um, yeah, that would be a tough fight for Conor, just because of that that size and power. I would agree with you. That would be yeah. a fun fight. That would be a yeah. fun fight. For sure. And then you had a, in the main event, you had Cody Garbrandt uh, versus uh, Tal Thomas Almeida. Cody got the win by an impressive fashion via knockout in the first round. Um, just overwhelmed Thomas, who's a notorious slow starter um, with an impressive record, though, um, and had a lot of hype going into this fight. Um, nobody really expected Cody to perform, perform that way. Uh, we know he was like a power puncher, really aggressive, but man, he he hit the gates running and, and uh, it. it Thomas was not able to catch up and pretty much ate some punches and went out. Yeah, Cody's one of those guys. He's one of those prospects, up and coming prospects, and you know in the UFC that looks really good, man. I mean, yeah. that guy is—he's really big for the division. He's a super tall kid with power and Almeida, man. He, you know, he usually starts warming up in the second round, and I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody can take the power of Cody. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy that I even think about it because Cody. I, it just seemed like yesterday he debuted in the UFC, and here he is, you know, headlining the a UFC fight card in FS1. And yeah. props for him. And, and I, I wonder where this, lead, you know, leads him in the division. You know, that that 135 pound and 145 pound division are really exciting divisions. And I'm, yeah. I'm wondering uh, where Cody's gonna fall in place in that 135 pound division. Yeah, I think so too. I think, I, well, I think he's gonna be at the top pretty much. I mean, he's probably not gonna get a title shot right away. I wouldn't t say title shot. I hope shot. not. No, yeah. I hope that the UFC, you no. know. It does it right and does it yeah. slow. Yeah, they'll get, probably give him a, at least a top 10, a top 5, another top 10 or top 5. Yeah. Uh, we, I think we we're going to see him. I think we, we could see him fight for the title within the next year or so. Yeah, and, for and, sure. And, you know, and Cole is a really marketable guy, man. I, I know a lot of girls that, that, that like <laughs> yeah. his look and yeah. he's tattooed. He has a, a brass personality and, and he can fight well, man. And he has that story with that, that kid that, that he always brings to the cave yeah, with cancer. Yeah. So he has. Yeah. He's very marketable, man. He's he's one of the uh, shining stars in the UFC right now. Yeah, big neck tattoo. Yeah, big neck tattoo. <laughs> yeah. So, um, right now we're gonna get to our first guest. Uh, this is Raymond Alizalde, uh, the Bloodhound. I want you to, uh, guys to check out this interview. We caught up with them through Skype. So, here you go. Coming on the show, man. <laughs> yeah. <no problem. laughs> All right. So. Um, for the fans who don't know, you're, you're Raymond uh, Alizalde, man. You're you're undefeated. Wait, nine and zero right now, right? Yes, sir. The next fighting for RFA thirty eight at the Hangar in Costa Mesa this weekend. Um, it's great to have you on the show again, man. And how are you doing, man? You just came down uh, from Colorado back to California. How's everything going? Uh, everything's going great. Um, I've just been training the past five months over there at uh, Bang Muay Thai headquarters with Dwayne Ludwig, TJ Dillashaw, Matt the Immortal Brown, a bunch of other UFC fighters right there at um, Muscle Farm Gym. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, I took this fight in a two-week notice, but like I said, I've been training the past couple months consistently, so I feel great. That's quite a uh, like a lineup, man. You have Muscle Farm and you have you know Dwayne. Talk to us about you know the experience with those guys and and uh, specifically your, your your Muay Thai training the, with Dwayne. Um, what we focused on a lot was the the footwork, the head movement, working the angles, fighting orthodox and southpaw. Um, it really is a one-of-a-kind, uh, unique training system, and I've been doing mixed martial arts for about 10 years, and I've trained in many, many striking arts, um, shelling, kung fu, taekwondo, kickboxing, boxing, uh, Muay Thai, you name it, I've done it, and 
there's nothing like that like, like that system there. So I've definitely learned a lot, and I can't wait to show my skills this upcoming Friday. Cool. How was a uh, how was a uh, TJ working with TJ and all the guys over there? How was it working with Dwayne? Um, you always hear about them being like these personalities of like Dwayne, just you know, like ADHD Dwayne, and then you have like you know uh, TJ just uh, overly aggressive in the gym. TJ, so uh, is the, are these true or is it just how how was it your experience over there with those guys? Um, well, I actually stopped by Team Alpha Male in the past, back when uh, Dwayne was was uh, the head the head striking coach over there. And it was a different environment um, because your IFA were on that gym, and um, and it was also nothing but fighters. Whereas the kick now that Dwayne has his own kickboxing gym, and um, it's not all fighters. Um, there is a lot of fighters there, but it's it's to the general public as well. So it's a whole it's a lot different. It's a whole different vibe. And he said it in the past too. He didn't want to to coach nothing but fighters because it's it's very stressful and everybody was taught a certain way certain ways of training um throughout the years so there's a lot of people who like bump heads and stuff like that with the coaches like oh i was taught this way i, I like to throw strikes like this like that but it so it's hard to start with adults rather than with children and starting fresh you know because right. they absorb yeah. everything yeah. um but but um, yeah, there was no egos, no nothing. Um, as for TJ, um, you know, he just trains hard. I mean, he was the previous champion, and he goes hard all the time. You know, it's. But I mean, he's not there to beat the crap out of you. Every everybody critiques each other, and everybody teaches each other. So everybody's constantly learning and and bettering one another. So awesome. Well, I know before you know Dwayne had mentioned that he didn't want to work with fires, like he said. So is, is Dwayne like your new uh, Muay Thai head coach uh, permanently going on? Um, well, now I'm actually permanently in um, California now. Right now I'm in the Imperial Valley, but I'll be moving back to San Diego like in a month or so. And I, I actually have a lot of coaches out there that I work with one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'll be flying out to Colorado to continue working with Muscle Farm and Dwayne Ludwig as well. Um, He's uh, he's my main um, kickboxing coach now. So when I go back out there to work that style of striking, but like I said, I'm still right now. I'm at the Shaolin Kung Fu School, so I'm working my kung fu and taekwondo. And, and then when I go back to San Diego, I'll be working my boxing, Muay Thai, uh, kickboxing as well up there. So there's there, I have different instructors of of each art. So a lot of people frown upon that, um, especially certain arts like Muay Thai, like if you're with King Tiger Muay Thai, you shouldn't be training with like um, fuck it top team or city on tongue or something. But um, thankfully my trainers are understandable and they, they know uh, and mix, every mixed martial artist is different and it's a never ending learning experience. And each martial artist ha creates their own craft. So you'll never right. find one martial art or two martial artists that have the same styles of fighting. And so, are you gonna? Is there one uh, school or one camp that you're gonna be working at in San Diego, like where you're gonna be training majority of the time, like, or is it just you're gonna just continue moving from school to school? Um, I actually the the main uh, three schools I work with in San Diego are San Diego Combat Academy, which is also Ten Planet Jiu Jitsu, um, Black House MMA in San Diego, and I work a little bit here and there at Undisputed as well. And oh, and the arena as well to work okay. with Jesse, Jesse Taylor and and a couple other guys in the wrestling uh, MMA and wrestling department. Yeah. So that my my boxing coach and one of my Muay Thai coaches is actually from there as well. Oh, cool. So. Now, as far as your training camp goes, are you gonna be doing what these new fighters are doing as far as having the training camps, uh, you know, like evolve around them only, and having a training camp just for yourself, or will you be doing a training camp with 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 the whole team? Um, well, I have a lot of friends and fighters from each gym, so yeah. they all have my number. I tell, I tell them whenever they need me to come in and work with them, uh, just let me know. But once I'm uh, permanently moved back in San Diego, yeah, I'll be helping out everybody with their fight camps. In terms of sparring, though, I, keep, I, I limit myself in the sparring. Um, 
I help out some of my friends here and there in their fight camps when they really need it. Um, but you know, I've been doing this a long time, so yeah. I usually spar about four, four three, two, three, and four weeks out, um, hard sparring, and then mo- the majority of my sparring is technical sparring, which is also what Dwayne Ludwig focuses okay. on cool. uh, there. So it's not just everybody trying to take their head off and stuff right. like that. Right. <laughs> And talk about when you got the word to fight at RFA 38, um, when you officially signed a contract. It was only a short time ago that they, obviously you're like a replacement uh, for another fighter that supposed, was supposed to fight Richard. So talk about yes. when you got the word and then, you know, how you feel about fighting for RFA. Huh? Uh, I, I feel great. Um, I'm working with Paradigm Management and they, they just hit me up about, um, it was about a two week notice and I said sure I'll take the fight. Uh, I looked him up, uh, looked up my opponent Richard Alarcon. He trains at a Team Oyama with, uh, and also Lotus Jiu Jitsu with Ian McCall, Carla Esparza and all those guys. So they like to, um, they like to come out with their strikes and set up their takedowns. So I know he's going to shoot and try to take it to the ground eventually. Uh, but I feel confident. Like I, like I said, I've been training every art for the past 10 years and I've been working the past five months at Muscle Farm and Bang Muay Thai and also working with Leister Bowling and those guys. Uh, those guys are high level wrestling coaches. Right. Over there. So I feel pretty confident going into this fight. Um, as for Richard, he's a, he is a Division One wrestler, uh, pro belt Jiu Jitsu and I guess a Muay Thai fighter. But a lot of times with Muay Thai fighters, they're a bit stationary. Um, like I said, I train multiple striking styles, and working with, uh, at Bang Muay Thai, we cut a lot of angles, footwork, fight in uh, both stances, and a lot of head movement. So it's not your traditional Muay Thai and boxing where you just, you know, you have big gloves and you're able to actually block the shots. A lot. Of, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of. That's a big problem with a lot of MMA fighters. They get used to blocking the shots, and then they go into the MMA fight. And then these little gloves are still getting through. Right. Yeah. So over there, we're focusing on actually coming, getting in and out, cutting the angles, mm. slipping and tipping, and a lot of feints. So, I mean, it's going to show in this fight um, uh, this Friday. So awesome. <laughs> I mean, I mean, training with with guys at Muscle Farm and Dwayne, like you must have this confidence that's so high right now. Are you excited to show off your new tools uh, this Friday night? Yes, absolutely. Um, I have so many tools in, in my arsenal. Um, to me, an MMA fight is just a humongous chess match, and it only takes one wrong move to uh, get put away. But I know f- f- um, for my past fights, I haven't been able to dis- display all my arts or my techniques. And in this fight, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it entertaining and exciting, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to display all my um, arts as well because, uh, such as like I'm training here at Shelling Kung Fu, and we throw a lot of like spinning hook kicks and jumping spinning hook kicks and stuff like that. But I'm gonna keep that obviously to a minimum because this guy is gonna be focused on shooting uh, underneath every time I throw like a, a high kick or something like that. So. But I have uh, I have some uh, some tricks up my sleeve uh, ready for him. So all right, <laughs> that smirk says it all, man. <laughs> yeah, and you you obviously you train regularly. It's like you're never you never really have any off time. So you feel like your conditioning is going to be pretty much up to par and and to go like all three rounds with this guy. Yeah, I was training pretty hard. Um, actually, I've been training pretty hard that whole time I was out there, and especially the the previous two weeks leading up. To this fight, um, when I was informed about it, um, but this past weekend I was just traveling. Pretty much, um, we drove all the way from Colorado to Park City, Utah. Enjoyed some time there, and did some zip line stuff, and then uh, stopped in Las Vegas, and then now I'm back in the Imperial Valley. So I that was a good little uh, weekend of uh, rest and recovery, which I needed, and now it's focused on. Uh, game planning and cutting the weight and right now I'm about 10 pounds out so I feel good. Nice. Awesome. Now for the fans who don't know, you actually tried out for the Ultimate Fighter but you know, obviously the UFC canceled that. Um, any plans to compete or to try out for the Ultimate Fighter and uh, I know right now you're a bantamweight fighter. Are you going to be switching from bantamweight to flyweight or is bantamweight your permanent home? Yes, I actually, um, I'm open to fight um, flyweight and bantamweight um, or catchweight. 
Um, my last fight was actually at flyweight, and I felt pretty good with the weight cut, and I didn't even use an IV or anything like that. And I know those are the new rules that they're implementing now, and being within 8% of your weight or about 10 pounds out uh, the week of the fight. So um, shouldn't be a problem. Um, the weight cut uh, doesn't really affect me too much. I walk around about 145 uh, normally, so I feel good. I'm ready to go. Cool, dude. <laughs> So, Ray, it was a, the Memorial Day weekend. Today's Memorial Day. Um, how did you enjoy your weekend? Uh, what did you do for fun? Um, you, you talked about zip lining. How was that? Are you that adrenaline junkie type of guy? What do you, what do you, what do you, how was it for you? Uh, it was exciting. You know, I've been training hard these past couple of months, and especially these last two weeks leading up to, the, to this fight, um, once I was informed about it. Um, so, pretty much... This weekend, I was just traveling and stuff, and we stopped in Park City, Utah, and Las Vegas, and did some zip lining out there. Um, but yeah, it was just a, a, some rest and recovery that I needed, definitely. Yeah. And I actually got a professional massage yesterday as well, so Ooh. I'm feeling, feeling good right now. <laughs> girl? What's that? A girl? Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> right. All right, man. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you. Juan, uh, give us your uh, an idea of your like your sponsors. How do the fans can find you on social media? Uh, just let everybody know how to how to get a hold of you, man. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at the Bloodhound One. And pretty much, I just like to give a shout out to Lisa Bowling, uh, Muscle Farm, Dwayne Ludwig, and at uh, Bang Muay Thai, and Brian Walker right here at Shaolin Kung Fu, uh, and also Tony Ferguson for cornering me for for my upcoming fight and. Yeah. So I'll shout out for his upcoming fight against Michael Chiesa. Cool, oh, nice. That's gonna that's gonna be really cool. Yeah. Um, well, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Faye, for for coming on, man. It was, it was awesome seeing you on cam because before we, we talked to you through uh, through audio. So it was yeah. nice to see you in camera and uh, good luck with your fight, man. This Friday night, Josh and I probably be there this weekend. So until then, dude, uh, relax and we'll see you on Friday, brother. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, guys. You All guys right. have a good one. You too, hey, brother. Sir. Take care. Bye. That was Raymond Bloodhound. I was on it, guys. Uh, he's a he's a good friend of ours. Yeah. Um, one of the top prospects in MMA right now. I'm excited to see his fight this Friday night at the Hangar in in, the, in Costa Mesa, California. Yeah. This Friday night, the night before the UFC 199. So if you guys are in the Southern California area, LA area, check it out. Yeah, he's an undercard, so I think he, he's either the second or third fight. So check it out, man, because he's yeah. uh, he's been training with a lot of stars, and I'm excited to see his. Uh, that training to come to fruition in, like in the fight. Yeah, and catch on Access TV. He, he's uh, competing against Richard Alacron, uh, Alacron. So it's going to be a good fight. June 3rd, Costa Mesa, Hangar, OC, California. Make sure you check that Access TV. Right. Um, but now let's get into some, uh, fight, some fight talks, some fight news, what's been going on this week. There's not a whole lot of news outside of the fights over the weekend, but what did you, you find? What did you see? Yeah, I mean, there isn't that many headlines out this week. It was more matchups than anything else. Yeah. Um, but the one news that did come out was uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission um, added a nine-month sentence to Diego Brando, uh, a UFC fighter that got cut for his uh, his antics you know, outside the cage. I think he was uh, he got in trouble for pistol whipping somebody, but um, he got yeah. cut from, from the UFC for that. And then now the Nevada State Athletic Commission is adding nine more months for, I think, marijuana charge. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on, on, on that whole ordeal? I mean, you, you, you do the crime, you got to pay, man. It's, it sucks to see a guy as talented as he is. Um, I know he's got some, um, he seems like a wild card, wild like type of guy, just reckless a little bit and just goes to show it. You know, he carry a gun and you pistol up somebody and then you have like a marijuana charge on top of that. It's just as bad news. Uh, hopefully he doesn't downward spiral and go deeper and deeper right. into darkness, but um, hopefully he bounces back from this and learns something. Yeah, I mean, Diego is one of those, uh, he's like a, a character that's unpredictable, I think. I think he, he, uh, he finds himself in trouble and he, he I mean, like, like, like he's a good citizen when it, like, when it matters, I guess, yeah. but he's like, like, I don't know, with that guy, it's almost like he's like a, like a Jekyll and Hyde, so we'll find out what happens with him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but Matt Brown, they announced his fight uh, then this week. He'll be fighting Jake Ellenberger at UFC uh, 201. Um, I'm really excited for this fight. I think I think this is a good fight for for Matt. A, a, a great style fight for him, and I can see Matt um, beating Jake Ellenberger. I'm gonna go if I had to pick right now. I'd probably go with Matt Brown. I think he's uh, the stronger fighter, the bigger guy. Um, you know, 
Jake's, I know, a wrestler, but he's never been that much of a takedown artist. Uh, Stand-up wise, I'd probably go with Matt Brown. He's just relentless, tough. You know. Yeah, yeah and Matt Brown's coming off that, that tough defeat over Jamie Maya. Yeah. And he had a, that bad experience in Brazil where I think his coach got j got jumped or... To get into a fight with somebody? Yeah, I, I think, think, yeah, I think right? fight with his coach. Yeah. I thought it was an old coach of his. Yeah, yeah. Got into a yeah, fight Yeah, not a with recent him. coach. It was an old coach. It's of, an older of his, coach, but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Matt Brown... He, he's he's training over at Muscle Farm, man. So I'm excited yeah. to see this fight. I think it's a good fight for him. Yeah. Um, and also a big uh, heavyweight championship fight for the UFC heavyweight championship would be uh, um, the champion <clears throat> Steven Miocic fighting uh, also over him. Finally, over him gets a title shot in the UFC in the hometown of Cleveland. I'm super excited for this fight. This is a a tough fight to call, man. I mean, I think both guys are pretty much even as far as the striking. I think I think I gave the the edge to over him. Yeah. But as far as picking a fight, that's a tough fight to pick. Like, that's a, pick, that's a tough fight to pick. Um, I'll probably s stick with Miocic. I think his his footwork. I know uh, Alistair is a big uh, big guy and you know very crafty with his stand up. Um, he looks a little awkward at times just because he just the way he, his movements are. But he picks his shots so well. Um, it's gonna be tough. I think I think he's a tougher fight uh, than when Junior fought Alistair. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I'm excited for that one. There's a couple other fights that were made for heavyweight recently too. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, going back to this fight, I think the heavyweight championship belt in the UFC is like a hot potato, man. Especially with with Stipe holding the belt. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think I think Stipe can can edge out a victory, but who knows, man? I, like yeah. I've seen crazier things in MMA, so yeah, it should be an interesting fight, and that's gonna be a UFC 203. Um, no, I'm sorry. 201? 201. 201, I'm sorry. 201. Um, but at 203, it would be uh, Verdun versus Ben Rothrell. Um, Rothrell coming off that, that defeat over uh, Dos Santos. And, uh, you know, Verdun, you know, obviously losing the title to Stipe. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a very inter interesting fight in, in the heavyweight division, but I can see um, um, Verdun putting out the victory. I can see Verdun pulling out the victory, too. I know they announced this fight during the fight card, and it was like, oh, we got a big announcement. It's gonna be this big fight. Joe, Joe Rogan's uh, reaction was pretty epic. What was his reaction? Oh my god! Really? Yeah, yeah. he was. He was really excited. No, I, I didn't even bat an eye. Really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, me either. I mean, it was. I, I didn't really care either. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. I, I, I see. I see this being. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going for this can, Doom. This can easily be like a headliner for a, for a Fox Sports yeah. card. Yeah. Because they're, they're teasing it like, oh, we got this big announcement. And I just remember when they announced it, I'm like, all right. I could... Sure, I guess. Sure, whatever. Okay. Um, and another throwback heavyweight fight in the heavyweight division would be Andre Alaski taking on Josh Barnett. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a, a great fight. I mean, two guys that are seeking a, a win. Both guys are on a, on a loser streak. Um, if I had to pick one, it'd probably be uh, Josh Barnett, man. Your thoughts? If I had to pick one, I'd, 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 I'd go with Arlovsky. Um, I think he's. Uh, I think he might have a little bit more in him to to regain his position in the in the heavyweight division than Barnett. Barnett hasn't been looking good at all, really. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't see much from him in this fight, aside from hitting Arlovsky with a good shot. That's about it. Yeah. So that fight happened at UFC Fight Night in Germany. So, and then another blow to 199. You know, BJ Penn. Yeah. Um, was supposed to compete at UFC 199 um, against Dennis Silver. Dennis Silver got put out of the fight, and then they replaced Dennis with um, with Cole Miller. Um, but Cole, yeah. but BJ Penn got uh, got violated by taking I think um, IV ban you know an IV right. And, yeah. And yeah. so he so he's off the card now, and now they're replacing BJ Penn with Alex Asares at the UFC 199 prelims. Um, I like. Um, Cole Miller in this fight. Your thoughts on BJ Penn and uh, your thoughts on this fight? No, I, I like uh, I like probably Casares in this fight, and we'll get on that once we cover the 199. But in, in terms of BJ Penn's case, it's going to be a, a tough situation for him to really get out of. Um, I know he's been on a, a, a you know an advocate for uh, for those against IV usage, and and then look what happens. He gets you know he gets caught using IVs in training. Um, and it's not a good look for him. I wonder if he's going to really bounce back from this and if he's going to come actually uh, make a return um, and what it, what his, what this affects in terms of his training at Jackson's, how that's going to be, if he's going to stay there, if he's just going to, you know, stop training altogether and, you know, stay in retirement. Who knows really, but um, 
it, it sucks to see him go. And it really uh, sucks to see him off the card. I was really looking forward to seeing his return. Yeah, and I'm saying here, especially, you know, him fighting in L.A. in our backyard to see P.J. Penn compete at, in L.A. would be awesome. But yeah. But it's not going to happen. And I was really excited to see B.J. Penn come back. You know, he's someone that's known to um, not make a real effort in his past training camps where now he's at, he made an effort to go out of Jackson's and then uh, Jackson and, and Winkle John gave him that confidence. And I was really happy to see how he's going to look as, a, as, a, as, as one that's making that effort to, uh, to compete. So it's too bad that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah. It, it sucks, really. Um, but now we're going to get into some fight picks. And for those of you uh, in Vegas over the weekend, you know, if you want to take our advice for some of these picks, go ahead and do so. I wouldn't suggest that, but all right. Um, you have UC 199, which takes place June 4th in, uh, at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Inglewood. So you have... Uh, so good. <laughs> so you have at the Forum, which is a it's a nice venue. Uh, they they re... Uh, they redid it. Redid the venue. So it's all about the same size. If you haven't been there, it's about the same size comparable to uh, either the MGM or the Mandalay Bay. It's fairly the same size as those two. So you're going to get a, anywhere you sit, you're a good seat. Right. Um, but we'll... we'll Touch on this card. I mean, we'll pretty much just start from Alex Xcaris up, and on the Fight Pass prelims, you have um, you have Dunyong Kim, Kevin Casey, you have Tom Breeze, you have Sean Strickland, and you have uh, a good fight with Jessica Andrade and Jessica Payne, which I'll probably go with Jessica Payne. Who do you have? Same, Jessica Payne. Same. Um, and that is, that fight kicks off the Fox Sports One uh, portion of the card. You have James Vick against Benil Dariush. You have Clay Guida, Brian Ortega. And we, you heard our picks for Alex Caceres and Cole Miller. So we go with the main card. You have Bobby Green versus Dustin Poirier. I'd probably go with uh, Dustin in this fight. I think overall he's a more experienced, talented fighter. Bobby Green's tough, but I don't think he's going to have enough for Dustin. Who do you have? Yeah, I like Dustin Poirier in this fight. I think uh, he has great submissions. Uh, he has a great stand-up. And I can see Dustin finishing Bobby Green in the, in, in the second or third round. Yeah, yeah, I, I would, I would say, too, I would agree with that too. Um, I could see that happening. And then you have Dan Henderson versus uh, Hector Lombard, which is a good fight, kind of flown under the radar. I haven't really even been thinking about this fight, but until you know recently, um, I'm probably gonna go with Hector Lombard in this fight. I think his power and his speed in the first round, especially, is gonna be too much for Dan Henderson and the current state of his chin. I think it's a big question right there. So this could be the last time we see Dan. So what do you think about this? It seems that every time the UFC has a card in LA, Dan Harrison's always fighting on the card. Yeah. I think he's from <laughs> but, Temecula. Where is he from? Right? Yeah, he's, in yeah he's, not, he's not too far away. Yeah. But I think I think we're seeing Dan Harrison in his tail end of the career. I think his age is showing in his fights, and uh, I like Hector Lombard. He's a younger fighter. He, I, you know, Dan Harrison's chin isn't the same as it used to be, which is unfortunate. But if I had to pick one, I'd pick uh, Hector Lombard. Yeah, I would, yeah. So you have um, Max Holloway and Ricardo Lamas, which is a fantastic fight right there. Really good card against two very um, talented top contenders in the division. Um, Max Holloway should be fighting for a title if he gets past this, uh, heck, uh, Rick, uh, Ricardo Lamas. So I'm going to go with uh, Max Holloway. I think he's just on another level right now. Um, I see him fighting for the title next if Connor or whoever. It's between him and Connor pretty much. Yeah, Josh and I actually interviewed him uh, a few months back, and he wanted to fight Josie Aldo when we interviewed him. That would be yeah. a, a fantastic fight. I think Max Holloway is on another level right now. I think I think he's right behind Frankie Edgar in that division. I think Ricardo Lamas is a tough, tough guy. I mean, I can see this fight Definitely. going either way, but if I have to pick one to be Max Holloway, but I've seen crazier things in MMA. I mean, it's a very close fight, very exciting fight, and this is partly the people's main event right here. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then in the co-main event, you had Dominic Cruz versus Uriah Favor, uh, the the triple you know triple threat match up here, and it's a rubber match. You have Dominic Cruz, Uriah Favor. I'm gonna stick with the defending champ, Dominic Cruz in this one. I think he's just uh, surpassed Uriah Favor at this point. Uh, Uriah Favor didn't have much for him in their 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 rematch, and I think it's gonna be the same in this fight. I mean. Your eye favor, unfortunately, is one of those guys that can beat everybody in the division but the champion, you know, uh, and Dominic Cruz, he's undefeated at Bantamweight. Um, his, his, his record is super impressive. I think uh, Dominic Cruz is going to have better footwork. I think 
you know, Fury's gonna have a hard time hitting Dominic in this fight, and I think uh, Dominic Cruz is gonna win via decision. Yeah. And then in the main event, you have uh, Luke Rockhold versus Michael Bisping. This was supposed to be Luke Rockhold versus uh, Chris Weidman. Chris Weidman had to pull out due to injury. Um, I believe it was a neck injury, so he's gonna show, probably be back towards the end of the year. Uh, but this is a good fight. This is a rematch between these two. Um, I think it's gonna be Luke Rockhold's night again. I don't see uh, where Michael has, in terms of his style, an answer for what Luke Rockhold brings to the table. So I'm gonna go with Luke in this this rematch for the main event. Yeah, uh, Michael Bisping has been in the UFC for 10 years. He's finally getting that title shot. Unfortunately for him, it's coming off a you know two week short notice fight, um, and I can see Luke Rockhold beating Michael Bisping. I mean, Luke Rockhold has a had a full training camp, even yeah. though Michael Bisping was in shape. It's a different animal, man, and and you know this is a rematch between those two guys, and Luke yeah. beat him already the first time, and I can see this being an even worse beating. But again, this is MMA, and it can happen in the fight. But I'm gonna pick Luke Rock Luke Rockhold to retain his middleweight championship. Yeah, for sure. So that's UFC 199, June 4th uh, at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Make sure you guys catch that on uh, UFC Fight Pass, Fox Sports One, and obviously uh, Pay Per View. So make sure you catch that. And also RFA 38 and Cage Warriors 76, which uh, RFA is on Access, Cage Warriors on UFC Fight Pass, and you have a, a good weekend of fights right there. Um, I want to thank, or we want to thank uh, Raymond Elizalde for being on the show, uh, being our first guest on the YouTube portion of this show, and hope you guys enjoy this new format. If you have any comments, suggestions, whatever, leave them in the comments section. Um, don't be a keyboard warrior. <laughs> don't be, yeah. Um, and also, you can uh, go to the MMAcomplex.com to get everything and rewatch this on there also. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, we're going to always be improving this. And we're going to be bringing new, uh, new interviews and uh, just, just always trying to better the show and better your guys' experience. And, you know, hopefully, you guys enjoy it. And,. We'll see you then. Uh, follow me on Twitter, MMA Complex Josh, and uh, the show at the MMA Complex. And, go, and don't forget to, to hit subscribe on the on our YouTube channel. Yes. Spread the word, man. Tell your friends about it. And 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 uh, and if you guys are listening to our audio portion on iTunes or wherever, go ahead and leave us a, a review to help the show get noticed. You can follow me on Twitter at the MMA Complex James J A Y M Z. We want to thank HollowRockGear.com. Sponsoring the show, go ahead and go to hollowrockgear.com, register, and then use the promo code COMPLEX15 to see yourself 15% off your order. And uh, that's going to be quite an exciting night of fights uh, yeah. this coming week. Josh and I will recap all the action from this, this uh, coming pay-per-view event. So until then, enjoy the fights and enjoy your week.